How to survive a hood fight. Hood fights are the worst of all. If you're living in a bad neighborhood, then clashes can occur pretty often. Surviving a bad neighborhood is not a joke. You might be living next to a murderer or a drug dealer. This gives it a really dark angle, and the worst happens when you get into a fight with them. Welcome, and today we'll guide you in a step-by-step -step manner of surviving a hood fight. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Create a scene. To understand the situation precisely, let's create something similar. You live in the worst neighborhood. Every wall is painted with graffiti. There are gangs on the opposite sides of the town. The hood is surrounded by hookers, drugs, loud music, and all the other messy things. They're a part of your life now. Now the worst thing happens and you get into a fight with them. This is the worst situation you want to be in because once you get in a fight with the gang, you're pretty messed up. But hey, let's keep it that way for now. So, how to survive the fight? Let's assume you're surrounded by three gang members and there's no way out. So in this case, what martial arts will be the best? Well, the answer is all fogged up because there's not a single option to choose from, but it's all considered if they don't have weapons like guns or knives. Because if they have, your survival possibility is turned to zero. Even Bruce Lee used to carry a 357 Magnum for self-defense. So if they have weapons and you're outnumbered, then there's no way out. But if there's only one guy with a weapon, then you can easily survive. Only if you know some martial arts. But hey, let's get back to the topic, shall we? The first martial art that can help you is boxing. Boxing is great against dealing with multiple opponents. You can calmly put them in their place while waiting for perfect timing. You'll see many videos on YouTube where a boxer deals with multiple opponents in a street fight. This is an effective martial art, but it comes with hesitation. Boxing can only be effective if the opponents you're facing don't know how to fight. If they know how to block and are using their kicks instead of their hands, then you're in great danger. As you won't know how to defend against the incoming kick, they'll give you a hard time. So if the opponents know how to handle themselves, then you should probably go for the other martial arts. Is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Judo effective? The answer to this is no. I know that Jiu-Jitsu and Judo are efficient and beautiful martial arts. Techniques are the kings of both of them. But the thing with these styles is they take the fight to the ground and can only be used against one enemy. While in a street fight with multiple attackers, you don't want to be on the ground. Because once you get on the ground, there's no way out. So BJJ and Judo are not the options. So you should take some help from other martial arts like Muay Thai. This is the section where the martial arts against multiple attackers becomes efficient. Muay Thai can be pretty deadly against multiple attackers. With this martial art, you can deliver low kicks, front kicks, or teep kicks. It can be variedly used from pushing your opponents away to knocking them out, while well-placed low kicks on the knee will work like a saint for you. Of course, you can use the striking techniques of Muay Thai, but when it comes to kicks and elbows, Muay Thai thrives the most. But hey! Once you get a chance of getting away from there, just run away. But there's an even better martial art, and that's Lethway. I know that you might be hearing the name Lethway for the first time, but it's a deadly martial art even more than Muay Thai. This fighting style is governed in Thai's neighboring country, Burma. In similarities, both Muay Thai and Lethway are the same, but Lethway comes with greater advantages, and that's headbutts. This is the concept lacking in the previous fighting style, we all know how lethal they can be. They can be used to end fights in seconds. But if you can't find a Lethway Academy near you, then you shall go for Krav Maga. Krav Maga is the only martial art that tells you to run away from critical conditions. The fighting style is all about self-defense with no sporting element. Krav Maga is comprised of wrestling, Aikido, boxing, Judo, and Karate. This makes it the best effective martial art. It even teaches you self-defense against weapons like guns and knives. This makes it an ideal self-defense martial art to master. But hold up, before you consider going for it, because there is a king against multiple opponents waiting for, and that is MMA. Mixed martial arts is the best fighting style out there. Of course, it doesn't teach you how to disarm, but from ground fighting to standing up, MMA is the best. Ground fighting is something we haven't talked about yet, the deal with other martial arts like Muay Thai, Lethway, Boxing, and maybe Krav Maga is that they don't efficiently teach you how to handle the ground situation. 
MMA is the best in every case scenario. You can deal with a bunch of goons easily with MMA up your sleeves. Now that you know the martial arts and their techniques you can use to survive a hood fight, what about the aftermath of the fight? So you fought the gang members, but now you know that you're pretty messed up, right? Because there's nothing you can do now. It's most probably that the gang members will come after you. And this time, they'll be more in numbers. You can call the authorities, of course, but we know that cops are not the quickest and efficient in those types of areas. So how to survive it then? Well, the only answers I could find are running away or coping with the gang. If you think you can make it up to the gang and settle the messed up situation with them, then you're good to go. But we know that it might not be that easy and they might not accept your apology. So what should you do then? The only answer is to run away and leave the bad neighborhood. Just get into your house, collect all your valuable items and leave as soon as possible. But hey, let's be honest here. If you could just move out of the bad town, then why bother living there from the start? It was foolish of me to even add that. So now you know that's also not an option. For a complete solution to the problem, we have to travel back in time. So let's get back to a week before the fight and try to fix all the problems related to this bad neighborhood. Precautionary Steps You shall use these steps to avoid getting in a hood fight in the first place. The first step is knowing your neighbors. If you're planning to live there for a long time or even short, you shall always build a good relationship with your neighbors. No, it doesn't matter how bad they are because you're trying to save your skin. As a result, you'll lie on their good side. However, it's not the only step you should take. The second step you should take is installing a security system. You already know that most of the time you can't rely on the authorities under that specific locality. So installing a security system will keep you and your loved ones safe. The third step you can take is making your home feel less of a target for the goons. Install lights on every possible exit. Goons are lazy and they'll always go for the easy target, so make it a hard target. The last step is the most effective and it'll save you from much of the street hustle. Dress like the neighbors, but not like the gang. Adopting the same dressing style as the neighbors will save you from a lot of hassle, but don't ever dress like the gang members because you'll act as a target for the opposing team. Secondly, always know where you're going. Never feel lost in your neighborhood even if you forget the way back home. When you see a bunch of guys at the far end of the street, just simply change your route and always act confident. Changing the street is the key to avoiding unsought trouble. Final Thoughts With all those precaution steps, you can make your life easier. But just to show you that fighting the gang members can be messy, if they're trying to mug you, you shouldn't fight back. But if they're trying to be physical with you and it's a life and death situation, then you don't have any other option but to fight back. With that said, I'm sorry, but we've reached the end of the video. You know that YouTube has given you that feature of sharing your thoughts, so don't forget to comment, and if you have any other surviving tips, kindly let us know. Lastly, if you admired our video, press the like button and subscribe to our channel for more combat videos. We'll see you in the next one.